Okay, so the first artist we have that will be joining us is Amy Alstrom. So Amy, go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, tell us, uh, introduce yourself. Tell us about your time at ARC and about the pieces in your ex in the exhibition. Hello, uh, so my name is Amy Alstrom and I am a modern quilter. Uh, I quilt mostly in silk and cotton. Uh, my work is appliques, so they're all things that I cut and fuse um, onto the fabric. Um, so I was at ARC for about two years. I shared a studio upstairs with um, Joshua Coffey, who is, is still with ARC. Um, one of the things I loved about being at ARC was just the wide variety of experiences that you could have um, during a day at ARC. Like I would come in and uh, get my coffee at Vega and like visit with Jason at Kearney Street and, uh, you know, chat with everybody there. There's gallery shows, um, workshops, and then, you know, hopefully make some art while I was there <laughs> at the same time. Um, so the three quilts that I have in the show um, are titled Used To, uh, One to Three. And this is part of a series that I did in the fall of 2019. Um, there are a series of self portraits about kind of like how your sense of self fragments and changes uh, when you're in a depressive state. Um, so I think for me, at least it feels like my identity fragments and I'm kind of different versions of myself. Um, so even though these are all, you can see that they're kind of silkscreen like, they're all hand cut um, and fused, but I wanted to give it the effect of kind of like a blurred photograph. Um, and then I just did it in a couple of different directions and colorways. Um, the title uh, used to is inspired by a song by the band Wire. And uh, yeah, I think it begins, let's see, I have it written down here. Uh, Does the pain remain when the head is turned and the body walks away, you used to know. Um, so yeah, there were actually four of these um, that I did for the Gallery of Modern Eden and there's three left. So uh, I think that's really all I have to say about these. So thank you for including me. Uh, it's great to be in such good company and to see so many familiar faces. Amy, tell us about the colors that are in the pieces. Uh, well, I mean, it's interesting because I use really bright colors and I kind of like the contrast of using bright colors and having maybe subject matter that's uh, not the most optimistic. Uh, I like the contrast of it, but part of it's that I've been working in the same palette for ooh, probably 15 years. There's something about these really vibrant silks that I like the contrast also between the black cotton. You can see that the black cotton is very matte and then that silk is very textured and shiny. Okay, Amy, thank you so much for uh, joining us tonight and participating in the exhibition. It was great to see you. Yeah, nice to see you. Thanks for including me. Okay. Okay, and our next uh, artist is Natalie Fabry. So Natalie, if you could go ahead and unmute yourself and introduce yourself. Tell us about your time at ARC and your pieces in the exhibition. Hey, so I'm Natalie Fabry. I'm an urban landscape artist, so I specialize mostly in city scenes. And um, most of my work is really colorful and vibrant. Um, I came to ARC over a year ago, about a month before lockdown. So my experience was um, an amazing opening with people coming to my studio, and then a few days later, everything locking down. That being said, it still has been an amazing experience because I could still use the facilities, the artists that are there are friendly and amazing. And even with everything going on, ARC has been super supportive to the artists, like doing things like this, these talks and continuing on the shows. So I feel really privileged to be part of ARC. Um, the three pieces I have in the show are my latest pieces. And um, this one's Light in the Darkness. It's a piece, I was influenced by a friend's photo of this alleyway and I was working on it and I decided to um, make the banner my own. Actually, I had um, Jen King and Soad who are here tonight, look at it with me and they were like, make it your own. So instead of an ad, I actually was able to write in Cantonese light in the darkness and I had it checked out and uh, so this is what it represents because most of my paintings are at dusk. 
I've been experimenting also with these white flowers, which you will see in the next piece, I believe, called Gracious. Um, and this one is a photo taken from Russian Hill going down. And um, I really love San Francisco. And uh, from this photo, I changed the colors of the buildings. But again, I'm using these white transparent flowers um, almost as a frame. And this is new in my work. Um, the third piece is the last in a series of paintings I did during COVID, which showed um, the falling apart of houses actually during that time. So I had one that was just missing pieces, one that was disintegrating, another one that was kind of shattering. And this one is just a full out explosion. Last piece, I, if I did any more, I think there would be nothing left. So, um, and again, I'm, I'm kind of playing around with the flowers in the foreground that aren't filled in. So that's about it. Thank you for including me in this exhibition. I'm really happy about it. Okay, Natalie, thanks for joining us tonight. It was good to see you and see the great pieces in the exhibition. Um, our next artist is Brent Hayden. Brent, go ahead and uh, unmute yourself. Uh, introduce yourself. Tell us about your time at ARC and the pieces in the exhibition. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Brent. I'm a mixed media artist um, residing in San Francisco and a current studio artist there uh, as of November. Um, so pretty new. Um, everything seems pretty quiet, but everyone's been you know, very welcoming. Um, to be interesting to see what it's like uh, when we resolve everything. But I've always loved the work coming out of uh, art. So it's nice to be a part of it. Shortly before the pandemic, um, I was experimenting with the new material, uh, shrinky dink. It's, uh, it's like a kid's craft. Um, so I tried to bring it into this kind of more mature state and kind of focus on uh, form and texture. And, you know, before everything, I was kind of making more representational work and kind of making like fictional metropolis scenes um, with little creatures everywhere. But I'm kind of in a transition between uh, making more abstract work and kind of focusing on uh, shape and just uh, just trying some new things. And I would say majority of my work kind of focuses on movement and energy and uh, kind of chaos in a controlled way. Um, I don't know, I just really like making vibrant uh, work that kind of screams at you. Yeah, this is a... Uh, it's kind of a newer one of the more abstract pieces. Um, people, I really like hearing what people like, uh, can relate to it. Like some people will see like a coral reef or someone will see a galaxy and you know anatomical work. And it's always just kind of uh, interesting to see you know how each person uh, can relate to it. And uh, yeah. Okay, Brent, tell us about the shrinky dinks. How does that work? Um, well, I do about half my work uh, at home and in the studio. Um, so basically it's, it comes as sheets, just like eight and a half by 11 sheets. And I'll just paint acrylic on it. And then I'll kind of cut collage, intertwine, um, kind of do just multiple things and then bake it for a few minutes and then uh, kind of mold it out of the oven and kind of play this game of like hot potato, uh, just kind of focusing on shape and bringing it into the studio and trying to make like big pieces out of it. So it's a, it's a fun halfway, it's been a lot of 14 hour days and it's fun traveling there. It's nice and quiet out. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's about it. Okay, Brent, thanks so much for joining us this evening and thanks for participating in the exhibition and we're happy to have you join us at ARC. Yeah, it's and great so to be there. Okay, so our next artist is Soad Cater. So Soad, go ahead and unmute yourself, introduce yourself, tell us about your time at ARC and about the pieces in the exhibition. All right, thank you, Stephen. Hello, everybody. Uh, so my name, Soad, was given to me in honor of my paternal grandmother as her first grandchild of 16. Translated from Arabic, Soad means happiness, joy, bliss, good fortune, no pressure, right? 
I did have good fortune to be one of the inaugural artists of ARC setting up in Studio 101 in 2010 and staying for an entire decade. I loved it. Being a part of ARC felt familial, uh, some structure and leadership with regular well-planned events, great community presence, and a well-cupped space, along with lots of freedom to explore our creative paths. We were together feeling the camaraderie and support, even if much of the time passed between actually seeing each other. I am ever connected and grateful to all of you. Thank you. Uh, my Inner World series takes visual inspiration from the ancient portraits uh, and rich color palettes of my Egyptian heritage. Uh, remember those profiles? <laughs> I am a lover of learning, committed to personal awareness and growth on the path to social justice, inner changes leading to outer changes. My models come from my communities near and far representing a variety of identities with an emphasis on women. With an interplay of analog and digital processes, I photograph, cut, collage, and then print the completed portrait onto wood to incorporate my composed silhouette into the raw grain. These kaleidoscopes of multi-layered pieces represent qualities of inner life as a call to know ourselves and each other more deeply beyond our outer profiles. Navigating differences in language and communication, experience, points of view, and opinion is something I learned early in life out of necessity because of my mixed race, mixed culture, and immigrant experiences. I create artwork to envision conversation with, conversation with and listening to ourselves and to each other uh, with an intention to be open to truth, delight, uh, acceptance, and to be curious about what may be keeping us apart because of personal blind spots, preconceived notions, or misunderstanding. Uh, hung together in the Sparks exhibit, the interconnectedness of our shared humanity can be imagined uh, through the profile abstractions and repeating colors, textures, shapes, and patterns originating from the garments and the backdrops of my source photos. Uh, when more of us are seen and included, imagine the wonder we can create together. Dream a Little Before You Think is inspired by Toni Morrison as an ode to stepping into your full creative power to make it happen. Uh, and A Seat at the Table is inspired by our Vice President Kamala Harris saying, in the years to come, what matters most is that we see ourselves in one another's struggles. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be included in this uh, um, exhibition. And I look forward to seeing you all in person. <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We love uh, your pieces in the exhibition. Our next artist is J.L. King. So Jen, if you could go ahead and unmute yourself, introduce yourself, tell us about your time at ARC and talk about your piece in the exhibition. Hi everyone, my name is Jen King and I um, came to ARC for my creative space uh, about four years ago. And I started off um, luckily with So Odd and we had a great run of time there. And then um, just last year, Natalie Febri um, came and shared the space with me. So uh, it's been a really great experience uh, for the past four years at ARC. And um, my piece in the show is called Stelby Resplendence. And I created this piece um, last year during 2020 before the closures. Um, it was inspired by many days um, alone in the studio and many, many of those days, the only thing that came to visit me was a single fly. I don't know if it was the same fly, but it was a, a very large fly that I always would fly into the studio and buzz around until finally I noticed enough to paint its portrait. Um, as loud as it was, I decided to paint it very large on a very large canvas. 
and um, with jewel tones and uh, which is why I called it resplendence just to, because I like, I wanted to um, elevate the, the fly in form and color. And I put a, a large can of lively brushes that looked like they were growing and um, getting ready to move around on the canvas by themselves um, by night in, during the nighttime. And same with the pencils that are on there too. Um, this piece was exhibited at the de Young Museum last year during um, the de Young Open. And now it's here at the ARC Gallery. And I'm very happy to be a part of the show. Okay, Jen, thank you so much for joining us and having uh, your wonderful piece of artwork included in the exhibition. Um, our next art, go ahead and mute yourself. Our next artist is Barbara Pollock Lewis. Barbara, go ahead and unmute yourself. You can introduce yourself. Tell us about your time at ARC and your pieces in the exhibition. Hi, everybody. I'm Barbara Pollock Lewis. Um, I'm primarily a painter, although I also do some collage and some other materials. Um, I come from a background in animation and photography, which has had a big impact on my work. And I've been at ARC since 2019, since October 2019. So it's been about a year and a half. I share a studio with Stephen Wagner, um, who's been great. And um, I just love the whole vibe of ARC. I love having galleries that I can see amazing work in. I love the energy of, of the other artists. I love the friendship, camaraderie. It's just, it's a really great group to be part of and it's just it's a real pleasure to be there every time I come there and get a you know get some coffee and just really love, I just love being here and hanging out um so yeah so this work is a big departure for me uh I spent about four years just painting people screaming <laughs> I had people modeling for me screaming uh and then the pandemic hit um, and so I just kind of changed course. I spent a lot of time alone. I spent a lot of time walking and kind of slowing down and just observing things. And so this series of uh, birds um, are really about just kind of like about isolation and um, just observing things more closely, taking some time to slow down, the lack of people and the more you know, I became more aware of animals and birds and nature during the pandemic. And so this is kind of a reflection of that. Um, with my background in photography, I've always been fascinated with shadows and light. And so I really wanted to kind of focus on that and also the geometry of these pieces and the design of, and putting them all together as a set of, um, as a set uh, was also a challenge for me. So uh, this was just sort of like an assignment that I gave myself. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what's going on here. Lots of pigeons. <laughs> okay, Barbara, thank you so much for uh, visit, participating with us tonight. Yeah, and thank you for including me. Okay, and our next artist is uh, Deborah Reebok. So Deborah, go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, you go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us about your time at ARC and the pieces that are in the exhibition. Okay. Um, my name is Deborah Reebok. I've been at ARC since the beginning of 2020 and I share, I'm an abstract photographer and I share a studio with Denise Tarantino, another photographer. Um, it, the community has a wonderful energy and the ongoing events really are very helpful uh, for the artists. As an abstract photographer, I'm fascinated by what's around us in our surroundings that we just don't take time to look at. And like Barbara just said, the pandemic helped me see the art that is all around us as we walk just through our everyday surroundings. One of the pieces, uh, this piece Mira, is the transformation of the new building that just went up in San Francisco called the Mira building. And I kept watching it change 
And as we globally were undergoing a transformation, um, some of my work is really about transforming what we see or don't see into something that's unusual and unique. Um, you wanna to go to some of the other pieces? Thank you. So some of the work I found this year, I was also interested and in, uh, in shadows and reflections. How does, we've all spent time or some of us have spent time reflecting on our lives during the pandemic, what has meaning to us. And so I've expanded that into my own personal transformation and thought process um, and included reflections as I build out my body of work. I love the patterns, the abstracts within the architecture. They draw me in the patterns, the shapes and the forms just draw me in. I feel as if, um, for instance, in the sky ladders photo on the bottom right, I could just walk into that and climb up those ladders and see where they were going to. So my intention is to create a unique viewing experience for the observer where they go, what is that? And how did that happen? Often you'll find me laying in the street with the camera upside down over my head, as you saw in the first picture, or in some contorted position to get a unique view, to encourage curiosity and expand our viewpoint so that we can transcend what we think everyday objects look like and open our eyes to the art around us. Okay. So thank you for including me in this exhibition. Okay, Deborah, thanks for joining us tonight and uh, participating in the exhibition. We're happy to have you part of ARC. Okay, and so our next artist is Rachel Sager. Rachel, if you would go ahead and unmute yourself, introduce yourself, tell us about your time at ARC <laughs> and the pieces in the exhibition. Hello, everyone. I'm Rachel. Um, I have been with, I was, I started with ARC at the very beginning. I was in Studio 103. Um, I was, it was a very important period of my career because I was painting every day, eight hours a day. So I saw everyone there all the time. I was a part of all the different shows and when they would have shows, I was there to open my door. So it was such a lovely experience and quite the family. I just loved ARC. It was such an important part of my career. So, um, so, so much love to all of you and I miss you guys so much and congratulations for the 10 years. Um, thank you for including me in the show also. Um, in regards to the paintings I put in the show, um, I've always, I've usually worked on things that had to do with deconstruction of material matter, everything that was basically disassembling things as they are. Um, for these particular pieces, it was almost a reassemblance of things. Um, during COVID, I found myself to be one of those victims of like um, mass amounts of information coming at me at all time. Uh, I have two young children, um, a two-year-old and a five-year-old, and I have two businesses with my husband and I'm a full-time painter. So there really was not much time for me to work. Um, so when I did start working, I found that I was kind of onslaughted with so much information that I found the best way to do it for myself was to reassemble information. Um, so this work is that it's, um, I, I collaged a bunch of imagery. I sourced um, imagery from wars, World War II specifically, a bunch of different um, 70s adult magazines, um, and you know various other things, and I put together these images that are, I guess, they're sentiments. They're basically sentiments. You know, they're ideas or things I felt, and this is how I collage them together. This, what you're seeing, are paintings that I created from collages. Um, so I assembled a bunch of different. I have like a million collages, and then I painted the ones I felt the most drawn to. Um, this one that you're looking at right now is time cell, which is a reference to the newest um, science that we've found out that we can actually store information within cells. And it, it actually 
creates um, memories that are almost like time frames in a movie um, that are so specific that if you have trauma, you can actually remember how you the thing you smelled, the way you felt, the things that were flying through the air in just moments of time. But because there was trauma, you remember it like, like I mean, it's like it's magical. So this for me is like that for me, and it has to do with mostly childbirth, basically. <laughs> so there was intimacy, there was like flesh everywhere, there was, you know, tons of different information coming at me all at once. And as you can hear, my children are fighting in the other room because I put a movie on for them on a school day. But you hey, know, Rachel. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's so good to see you, and it's great to have your pieces in the exhibition. Thank you so much, Stephen. Okay, take care. Go ahead and mute yourself. <laughs> and, uh, the next artist is uh, Deborah Cook Shapiro. So, Deborah, if you unmute yourself, go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us about your time at ARC and the pieces in the exhibition. Hi, okay. I had a studio at ARC um, for five years, and um, I've only recently been working from home and I found another studio space to share with a sculptor in the mission. And uh, I am so thrilled to be a part of this so that I can see my friends and my community from ARC. That was such an important time for me to have um, the closeness of uh, seeing everyone every day that I went in and I, you know, I miss everyone so much. So now that the pandemic, hopefully we can uh, see the light through this and stay in touch more. And I'm so thankful to ARC for having shows and opportunities for us to connect and show our work. <clears throat> so this is a new piece and it's um, our new normal is a, a piece that is from a whole selection of delights and celebration, even though it was started during the pandemic. And um, I had my boys who are in college home with their girlfriends and we were, that was our sheltering in place group. So I took full advantage of setting up a photo shoot and telling them what colors and then just letting them run loose. But I have to say that um, my ideas of what I had um, in mind of this whole body of work was really coming from art history quite a bit from Piero della Francesca and Tiepolo. And I, I had the big plans, but I just became caught up in the love and the joy that young people have. And even in, even in hard times, they're still happy and connecting and loving. And they're in this phase of life that is quite fleeting. So I really want my work to be about that. And um, as I was painting, I started simplifying and taking things away and really, I feel like it shifted me. This is an important piece for me because I think that it, it's where I learned what I um, needed to learn about myself for why I'm painting and what I want the work to be about. I kind of felt my heart move uh, into a different place through this piece. And um, it's about the poetry of the everyday. And it's really just much more simple than uh, I think that I've thought about my work in the past. It's just about love and connection and um, staying close. Uh, and the fact that the backdrop was a very difficult time made it more important for me to really try to find joy and celebration in the work that I'm going to be putting out into the world. So. Um, I am excited about the, the new work that's going to come from this one, because I also think that simplification and um, uh, losing detail is going to be important for me. Uh, yes, Deborah. So thank you so much for joining us this evening. And we're thrilled to have your, uh, your artwork included in the exhibition. Our next artist is Denise Tarantino. So Denise, go ahead and unmute yourself. Introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your time at ARC and your pieces in the exhibition. Hi, I'm Denise Tarantino. I'm an analog photographer and I work mostly uh, or exclusively um, in film. And um, I've really dedicated my art practice to um, uh, working with instant film uh, over the last year and a half or so. Um, so 
I have um, been at ARC since I think 2015. Um, I had a studio mate when I started with, uh, and that was Mike Kimball. And then when he moved to New Mexico, um, I kind of hung out in the studio uh, solo for a while. And now I'm, I'm grateful to have um, my studio mate, Deb Reebok there. And uh, it's nice to have a creative company. So um, this body of work that I've put together is um, inspired by, uh, I have a REM sleep disorder. And what that is, is um, during uh, the, the uh, stage in sleep, uh, which you're supposed to relax and just almost go into like a par paralysis, you know, I am not doing that. I am uh, dre dreaming vividly and I am, um, um, you know, acting out my dreams. So it's, it's really quite bizarre. And it is a byproduct or a, a secondary condition to Parkinson's disease, which um, I do have. So um, these, these images are uh, on expired Polaroid film and they're a combination of layering gels and um, over the camera lens when I take pictures. So these pictures were taken um, um, at an aquarium and I, uh, strip like it's expired film. So the color is, is somewhat unpredictable or, or faint. And really this dream, um, reoccurs for me because I have concerns for the ocean's health. So this particular dream was about rescuing and swimming with the um, marine life so that they could go into outer space. Um, some of my dreams are so vivid that they're um, uh, somewhat like the Beatles, uh, Yellow Submarine, um, George Downing's uh, rendition of the Yellow Submarine. Uh, they're almost cartoonish and that vivid. So. Um, I've been documenting a lot of my dream series and you'll see various uh, stages of input. Thank you for having me, Stephen. Hey, Denise, thanks so much for participating and joining us tonight and having your pieces included in the exhibition. Our next artist is Samantha Tello. So Samantha, if you could go ahead and introduce yourself, tell us about your time at ARC and the pieces in the exhibition, welcome. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Samantha Tello. Um, I had a studio at ARC for two years in uh, 2015 and 16, and I absolutely loved uh, being a part of this community and participating in all the opportunities that ARC offers. Um, I think that Michael, Priscilla, and Stephen really do a professional job, an amazing, amazing job, and I felt super supported throughout my time there. And I met amazing artists, super inspiring. So now I feel like when I go back and visit or drop off work for a show or anything, it feels like coming back home. Uh, I love it there. Um, so congratulations on 10 years. It's quite an accomplishment. And, um, and for this celebration, I'm, I'm excited to have uh, my work in this show. Uh, so thank you. Um, so I have two pieces in the Spark uh, exhibition. Um, they are titled uh, Fancy Women on Bikes. And uh, they are inspired and based on an event um, that started in the city of uh, Izmir in Turkey. Um, this event was founded uh, by a, a woman called Sima Gur in 2013. Um, and uh, what happened is like thousands of women uh, wearing fancy dresses and uh, riding decorated bicycles uh, took the streets of cities across Turkey uh, to proclaim their right uh, to cycle free of harassment and bullying. Um, uh, now this became an annual event and uh, it's seen uh, more like a celebration uh, than a protest or a demonstration. Um, their main goal is to raise awareness uh, of the intimidation that many women experience uh, while cycling. Um, 
And I learned about this and I thought this was a very interesting topic and I decided to do uh, work about it. Um, uh, the Fancy Women on Bikes movement uh, was born to unite women in uh, reclaiming their rights uh, to public spaces uh, with a very simple message, uh, but very powerful too, uh, that we should go wherever we want, dress however we like uh, and be visible, uh, yet not be uh, disturbed while we do that. Uh, so I decided to make these pieces as a part of series of works uh, based on this theme and um, taking the, the movement outside Turkey to other countries as well, since I feel that this right to feel comfortable in public spaces is uh, familiar to all women um, and it goes across cultures. Um, and to make these pieces, I use uh, the same materials that I currently use uh, in all my work now, which uh, is pyrography. What I uh, do is I burn the image on the wood panels uh, using a heated metallic point. Um, and uh, I also do use different shades of wood stains over the wood and, and I, I always present, I also do the um, gold and silver leaf uh, and acrylics. Um, so uh, thank you for including me in the show. Uh, I think that's it. And I show, um, I, 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 I love this celebration of art. They, they are really dear to me and it was a great experience and congratulations again uh, to ARC. Thank you. Okay, so thank you so much, Samantha, for uh, joining us tonight, participating in the artist talk. And it was great to see your artwork that's included in the exhibition. Thank so you, the next artist is Einar Gergen Weston. So Einar, if you could go ahead and unmute yourself, uh, introduce yourself, tell us about your time at ARC and tell us about your work in the exhibition. Hi everyone, I hope you're having a great night tonight celebrating with us the 10th year anniversary of ARC. Uh, I was at ARC uh, uh, between the years of 2019 to 2020. I think the very first time I was at ARC as a guest, as a visitor, was for an opening night for 48 Pillars show. and. I love the show, I love the space, I love the community, I love everything about it. Uh, over the years, I participated at uh, many juried shows at ARC, and whenever I went uh, for the opening nights of these shows, I loved visiting the artists uh, at you know, the different floors upstairs and at the same level. Uh, whenever I visited them, I was like, oh, this is like open studios all the time. I don't even need to wait for that. And uh, as time passed, uh, the artist became, you know, uh, my friend. And I always thought, oh, I would love to be a part of art. At the time, we were living in Oakland. And then when we started moving uh, back to San Francisco, I thought like, this is my opportunity to, to be at art. And I was happy to get a studio with my friend Scott Finn. Uh, the pieces that you see for this show, uh, the, is, they're part of my murmuration series. Uh, I have been very fascinated with uh, the idea that when in our super busy lives that we don't see each other when we pass through each other. And I tried to uh, show this this moment how we pass through each other without seeing when we create these abstract shapes and patterns. The very first time I started uh, creating these images was for the very special Four Squares art show uh, that uh, yearly annually uh, happens at art. And the, the first 16 pieces were from that show and that I loved it so much. I continued with it. Uh, I hope you will be able to come and visit this show before it closes. As Stephen said, it, it, Stephen said, it will be open on uh, Saturday. I'm very happy to be a part of this show and thank you so much for including me. Go Ark! Okay, thank you so much, uh, Einar, for joining us this evening. It was great to see you. We appreciate your participation in the exhibition. So ARC Gallery is open for uh, viewing of the exhibition on Saturdays, 12 to 3 p.m. for social distance viewing through May 8th. If you're interested in seeing the exhibition during the week, uh, you can email us at the email shown on the screen and we can set up a sign for uh, time 
for social distance uh, viewing of the exhibition one-on-one. -on -one. So these are a few shots of the exhibition. We're very proud uh, of the artists and their artwork and uh, proud of uh, how all this came together and how beautiful all the artwork looks together. So thank you for joining us tonight. We appreciate uh, your time. Uh, we hope that you come by the gallery to see this exhibition of uh, fabulous artwork. And here's to uh, 10 years of ARC. Uh, thank you to Michael Yoakum and Priscilla Otani, my business partners at ARC, uh, for all the work that they've done to uh, make all this happen uh, for the artists of San Francisco. So thanks for joining us tonight and we happy, hope you have a good evening. Take care.